First stop today is the Isle of Dogs, and I'm meeting an old friend to find out more about the area's fascinating nautical past. Well, welcome to the Isle of Dogs. Why is it called the Isle of Dogs? Where did the name come from? <laughs> Well, the short answer is nobody knows. Um, some people go with the literal answer that there were hunting dogs kenneled here, royal hunting dogs. Uh, some say Henry VIII, which puts us in the early 1500s. Some say Edward III in the 1300s. Doesn't seem likely to me. There was no hunting round here. It's more likely the corruption of some other word. The one I favor is Isle of Dykes, because in the medieval period, the Isle of Dogs was flooded twice a day because it was on the floodplain of the River Thames. And so Dutch engineers were brought over to build defences against the river. And obviously they were used to building dikes in the Netherlands because it's so low lying. And so it's possibly a corruption of dikes. But it was certainly being called Isle of Dogs by the 1540s because it's recorded as that in shipping records. Now the area has again dramatically changed like lots of places in London. Mm -hmm. um, can you just tell me a little bit the history of the place? The Isle of Dogs really was pasture land oh, right. and uh, prominent butchers of the city would own plots of land and they would graze their cattle here. And that was going on really until the 1850s before the Millwall Dock was built. Even after the West India Docks at the top of the island were built, there was still a lot of uh, agrarian economy on the island itself. How did it become industrialised? What was the key factor? Well, the key factor was the docks. You had Black Wall, which is at the uh, downriver side of yep. the island. That's where the basic embarkation points were. So there were shipyards there where two of Henry VIII's warships were repaired. Uh, Frobisher, who set out to find the Northwest Passage across the, the top of Canada, so you didn't have to go around Cape yeah. Fear to get the Pacific. He left from Black Wall. Further up river around Limehouse, Ratcliffe, Wapping, that's where the shipyards were for repair. There was such congestion in the river in the 18th century that docks were needed in order to accommodate shipping. Um, because cargoes would be sitting for about a month or so, and obviously you've got your investment tied up, but also it was uh, prone to pilfering. So that's why you needed the docks. And the, the story of the docks starts just at the north end of the island with West India docks. So the West India docks opened in 1802, and then the East India docks at Blackwall in 1806, so they're quite early on. Then the Millwall dock comes in in 1868. So you've got more and more workers there, and so they need to be accommodated. So increasingly, streets are being laid out for the dock workers, and indeed, ships captains, people like that. So David, on my travels here in the taxi, mm -hmm. um, I noticed a lot of the streets have exotic names. Cuba Street, for example. Does that have any relevance to what would have been going on there? The authentic streets do. They refer sometimes to the uh, particular companies that dealt with certain countries, and so they would accommodate their ship's captains in terraces of houses there. Or alternatively, it may be to do with the particular areas of the docks where certain cargoes are brought ashore. But there are also less authentic streets with uh, nautical names that owe their existence to the uh, development of the area in the 80s. Right, so Mast Maker Road and Spindrift Avenue and all these, they're sort of new. Absolutely, they're far from kosher. The Docklands Light Railways had a profound effect on the area, enables people to get out here. Well, the Docklands Light Railway, the DLR, which came into being in 1987, was um, the salvation of the area, really, because it wasn't really served by anything except a couple of bus routes. And if you're building an enterprise zone and you're trying to attract big business, you don't want them getting the bus. No. And so uh, a computerised light railway uh, was the answer. And it has extended significantly. It goes right out across the Lee to Beckton and places like that and the Excel Centre around the Royal oh, Docks. Yeah. And nowadays goes under the river to Greenwich because originally it actually terminated at Island Gardens at the bottom of the island and you had to walk through the foot tunnel. Ah, let's talk about the foot tunnel. I've never actually walked through it. Well, Greenwich foot tunnel uh, was there to replace the old ferry. Right. If you go down to Island Gardens Station, nearby there's a pub that commemorates the old ferry yeah. that used to go across. Primarily a horse ferry to transfer people's horses across, uh, but also used by pedestrians. But you need a more permanent crossing, and the foot tunnel provided that. So, 
One of the ways that people obviously get out here is at the back of my taxi, mm -hmm. but another pleasurable way to come out is on the river taxi. Oh yes. The river taxis essentially are taking us back in time because the Thames was the main transport artery before the 20th century. And <clears throat> as I understand it, the first proper commuting done by river was when the Daily Telegraph newspaper moved from Fleet Street to Docklands. Okay. And they established a river taxi for their uh, employees to come from Fleet Street out to Docklands and back again. But uh, it's become an increasingly popular way to uh, move from the island uh, into the city and back again. In fact, your reach goes all the way from Richmond upriver in Surrey, all the way down to Greenwich. The services are fairly frequent and quite inexpensive. And you're waiting by the river, which is an attractive place to wait anyway. And there's no traffic jams yet on the river? Uh, not just yet. No, no, not like there were in the 18th century. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.